Welcome back, smart home fans! The new Home Assistant 2025.10 is out, and the developers have packed in improvements, AI fun, smarter dashboards, and more voice control tricks. This is not your grandma's update, unless, of course, grandma has a smart home too. So, let's dive into this after a couple of seconds. But before we dive into automation editor changes, let's talk about my video. This video has been recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant, Beta 4 or Beta 4 for all of you that prefer that way. I try to postpone recording of those videos as much as I can, just to make sure that some of the bugs that do exist in beta are squished and that most of the functionality or all of the functionality I talk in the video will be in the final release. But as always, life happens and things get postponed. While everything should be in the final release, there always may be a change or two before this Wednesday. First up is the automation editor and it got a serious DLC. The sidebar is now resizable, so if you are dealing with a huge amount of actions in YAML, you can expand the sidebar to see more. Next, Control B is supported. You can paste copied blocks, triggers, actions or conditions right in your automation, where you want them. For example, I can click on this one, press Ctrl C to copy it, action copy to clipboard, and then Ctrl V to paste it here. But we also have option to undo. As you can see, it's gone. Of course, you can use the keyboard shortcuts. And yes, the overflow menus are back. So if you want to see them, just click on three dots and they are here. Some options moved around earlier, but after feedback, they brought it back to where it makes sense. Plus, the devs have also simplified repeat block syntax. Four smaller building blocks instead of one overcomplicated one. Don't worry, your YAML stays compatible. Click on add building block wherever you want, and then we have repeat for each, repeat multiple times, repeat until, and repeat while. The developers introduced something brand new. AI tasks, but this time for the images. In the release notes, they included the document example, which I really suggest you take a look at. Imagine your doorbell rings. With this, Home Assistant can capture the camera snapshot, send it to the AI model, and give you a quick answer back. For example, there is delivery person at the door. That's structured, repeatable AI in action. But the real power comes with the new AI image generation. For example, automatically generate a comic strip summary of your day and send it to your phone. Create a cute postcard from your front yard camera and share it with the family. Or even this bizarre one where, for example, you take a stream for the camera. In this case, this is this demo camera in Home Assistant. Use AI task generate image. Give it a name. Instruction to create goth image out of it. Select your AI engine that you will be using and create something wonderful or terrible like this one here. So yes, the official documentation gives you the doorbell example, but now that AI tasks can handle image generation, the fun and the chaos is limited only by your imagination. Dashboards are getting more intelligent, and unfortunately not this one here. The new home dashboard that was introduced in the latest release now suggests which entities to show based on what you interacted with over the past 24 hours and the time of the day. It dynamically shows relevant controls. The developers call these sections of suggested entities, so your dashboard becomes more helpful without you having to micromanage it. Time for language games. You can now define two wake words, assistance per voice assistant. Great for bilingual homes. For example, OK, triggers Spanish assistant or Croatian, and Hey for English, for example. Also, after voice command, assist now determines whether a full verbal confirmation is needed. If the action occurs in the same area as the device, it only plays a short beep, rather than full turned on the lights. Less chatter and more action. Lots of new integrations and upgrades. New ones are, for example, Compit, integration for the AC, ventilation, heating controllers, Droplet that monitors water usage in real time, E-key, Bionics, biometric access control, for example, fingerprint scans, etc., etc., 
IRM, KMI, Belgian Meteorological Institute for Weather Data, Libre Hardware Monitor, Monitor your CPU, GPU, fans, temperature on computers, Portainer to manage Docker containers from within Home Assistant, SFTP storage, backup over the SFTP SSH, usage predictions, which we talked just a couple of seconds ago because this one is used by the new experimental home dashboard. This is an internal integration that predicts which entities you'll use. Victron remote monitoring, pool solar and energy data from the Victron VRM, smart meter B route, connect via the B route protocol to smart meters, sync or something like that, integrate GE lighting sync devices, and also we have few upgrades to the existing integrations. For example, Philips Hue supports motion aware sensors, Reolink has more camera features, such as encoding, silent support, color temperature, and once again, doesn't Reolink updates repeat with each new release of Home Assistant? Then we have Shelly with big expansion, its illuminance sensor, presence entities, virtual buttons, present zones, object entities. Switchbot has new device support for the Plug Mini EU, Relay Switch 2PM, and of course K11 Plus Vacuum, which officially is still not released, but I am testing it right now. Then we have Tuya with huge update with energy sensors, air quality, solar inverter support, water quality sensors, etc. etc. Matter also got improvements, such as occupancy hold time, climate state, vacuum air actions. Then we have template and YAML editors that now have a toolbar, so floating buttons won't cover content. Also, logbook is renamed to activity. Analog clock got a smoother seconds hand option, and the thermostat card now supports water heater entities. Plus, we have a new more information dialog for media players but this wouldn't be released if there were any backward incompatible changes. Targeting labels in automations or scripts now also affects configuration or diagnostic entities. Here, travel time integration also changed. Free tier is gone and the interval has changed. Home connect alarm clock entity is removed. You use now number entity. In Shelly, some attributes were removed. You'll need to update automations accordingly. SmartThings AC Wind Free renamed to Wind underscore Free. In Tiber, price action now returns 15 minute data instead of hourly. And for ZHA, some extra cover entity attributes have been removed. Be sure to review your custom automations if you use any of those integrations or features. So that's Home Assistant 2025.10 release, packed with the UI tweaks, AI image tasks, smarter dashboards bilingual voice support and a laundry list of integrations that are improved or added. It's a big step in making Home Assistant more dynamic and responsive. I must say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And to each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos, thank you. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and pick something there. Last but not least, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. Ok, what feature are you most excited to try? Let me know down in a comment section and I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.